Welcome to Faith Harvest Church. Glad you are with us. We just thank you for those who are here or tuning in online. Um, what a wonderful service. We got a good one for you today. Amen. Uh, just thankful for Bert and his wife, Carolyn, being here with us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you. We're expectant today. Amen. Well, before I give you the opening, a couple, I don't know how long ago it was. Well, one day as we were praising and uh, singing the name of Jesus, the Lord told me, he said, I respond to my name. Just as we, call, if I was to call one of your names, you would, your attention would turn to me. That when we call upon the name of Jesus, it gets his attention. So before we go into any opening worship, for the next 30 seconds, we're going to call upon the name of Jesus. And we're going to expect him to respond. So just right now in your seat, just call upon the name of Jesus. Jesus, we just thank you. We love you, Jesus. We turn our attention to you, Jesus. That the sweet presence of the high priest will fill this atmosphere we love you jesus we worship you jesus king of kings lord of lords ancient of days the sweet rose of sharon it's all to you it's all to you jesus it's all to you jesus it's all to you we praise you jesus we worship you jesus glory 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. 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 Isn't he wonderful? Well, a couple weeks ago, I was in Atlanta for some, some business, and I took a nap. And when I woke up from the nap, my mind began to think on certain things, and I began to think on the coming of the Lord. Um, the Lord reminded me of a dream, the dream I had. And as I sat there, I had a phrase, and I'm going to read it to you, what the, the, the Lord's word, he began to download to me. He said, it's time to start running. It's time to pick up the pace. There's going to be a collision. The stream of the prayers of the saints of God and the glory of God are going to meet and propel the bride into the final hour the final stretch of the race, the finish line, the preparation of the Lord's coming. Before this collision, there's going to be inches and degrees of the glory revealed as preparation for the bride. It's no longer an option. It's happening right now. These are the last days, says the Lord. I am equipping. I am calling. I am anointing. I am activating. I am awakening. But I'm also shaking. I'm going to expose the foundations and the roots. I'm going to bring America to her knees. And in my spirit, I felt he was saying, I'm going to bring the church back to prayer. Now is the season. Now is the time to tap into the wells, the prayers, the promises, the storehouses. It's time to use your faith and the power of prayer to draw out of those deep places. I see a twofold call to prayer. Prayer that is driving force is intimacy to know him. But I also see intercessory prayer rising. Much to pray, much to do, because in order for this generation to reach its prophetic place that it's called to walk in, it has to go to the depths of the heart of the Father. Because when the depths of the Father's heart are reached to a greater reality and revelation, we will step into the realm where the impossibilities are possible and accessible. So I'm drawing, says the Lord. Many of you have felt the deposits. You have felt the stirrings. You have felt the tug. You felt the pull. You felt the cry. It's a pull of my love, of my nearness, of my closeness. It's the rhythms of my heartbeat. I need you to catch the beat of my heart. Yes, there will be a cost, but far too many are concerned with the cost because they love themselves and the world more than they love me. But I'm stirring you now that, so that you make the adjustments. For the intensity of my glory will increase the closer to the return of Jesus. We must make those adjustments now. We must develop now. We must, we must. For many aren't ready for the glory. 
but he's going to bring it by depths and degrees to the faithful. It will put pressure upon our lives, but by the end of it, we will look like the sun and be ready for the final wave of his glory. Don't be overtaken with grief for those who can't ride this wave. I've given them enough time to get their hearts in order. Many refused, many were lazy, many were too focused on the things of the world, many said, I have enough time. But beware of the small alarms and signals inside of you. Obey them, develop them, stay faithful to them. For the alarm is going to sound and the intensity of it will be hard for those who did not prepare. But for you who stayed the course and have been going through the season of preparation, you'll flow right into the greater wave. It'll be a smooth transition. You'll catch the current of the prayers of the saints and it will pull you right into the wave. This is the preparation of prayer. This is the invasion of prayer. This is the cultivation of an age. So, so let's just go ahead and let's stand to your feet. You had something? Okay. Well, just let's go ahead. Glory, glory. So we believe that there is a wave coming. We believe it's the wave to carry us into the shores of glory and to eternity. But there's preparation for his glory. Amen. Time's running out. It's just like the dream I had that I shared with y'all where I saw the tube. It was, I knew it was the Old Testament had been fulfilled and there was a clear tube in the sky and something happened to the harvest field and the f tube filled to the last portion. And I went inside and I told my parents, whether we go in the rapture, tribulation, by death or by grave, we'll see each other in eternity. And then a younger generation took into the vehicles and went out to the harvest. And so I know it's the close. I know we're at the end of the age. And it's not, and yes, we know the world's going to begin to be set up for the Antichrist, but I'm telling you, you get your mind off that. Think about what God's setting up for his bride to walk in. That there's going to be things we've, we've dreamed of seeing, we'll see and walk in. It's the realm of the impossibilities becoming possible and accessible. Amen. So just lift your hands to the Lord right now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you know the beginning from the end. You are the alpha, you're the omega. And so we thank you, Lord, that you have us in the right place at the right time, Lord, moving in the right direction. And Father, I pray today, if there's any who've gotten off course, I pray this service will just shift them right back into the plan and the place, the race that they have to run. So we give you the praise. We give you the honor. Before we do anything else, we worship you, Father. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be craved. You're worthy of honor and glory. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you would walk in the room as a man walks in the room and dine with us and and be with us that the atmosphere would begin to be filled with the fragrance of the high priests in this room today Lord Holy Spirit you make everything real you're the reality you're the firecracker of the Godhead and so Holy Ghost we plug into you right now that you would just charge this atmosphere that you would blow in this place that you would perform the Father's heart today in this service we thank you Holy Spirit that you would just us move in this place today. Holy Spirit, you have full permission. You have full access to every aspect of this service that no one would leave the same. Lord, we're not just coming for service today. Father, we're coming for a divine encounter. Lord, we're calling upon a Kairos moment today for Faith Harvest Church and for those who are in this church, who those who are visiting. I speak to the atmosphere, every spirit of hell, every spirit of witchcraft, every assault of the enemy that has tried to come against, we bind you up, we loose you from this service, every weight, every care, every disease, every infirmity, every devil, we bind and break your power over the people in this service today. We declare freedom to the atmosphere, we declare peace to the atmosphere, we declare hope and faith and love back into the atmosphere, we thank you for the angelic hosts moving and doing 
what they're called and assigned to do. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for heaven touching, for earth touching heaven today. Lord, we do not expect heaven to fall, but Father, we make the commitment to rise up to heaven's standard. In the name of Jesus, we go up to that place where we are seated in heavenly places. We see it with a bird's eye view today, a, 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 a watcher's view today, Lord God, that we will receive all that you have for us today. And we give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory in advance as it's done, as it's done, as it's done. And the church said, Amen. Shut that out of my cut time. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's just lift our hands and praise Him. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the honor and all the glory. You're the worthy one. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for what you want to do in this place today. Glory be to God. You know, we operate by the Spirit around here. We're not confined to any type of order. Praise God. And you know, we just want to flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead and just turn the service over to Bert. Let him just flow in the anointing that's been here through the worship. Hallelujah. And we'll, we'll, we'll take care of all the particulars later, okay? Praise God. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? Come on, brother. Praise God. You know, it might be, well, this is a small place. My wife likes to have a mic by her too, but we'll share. We'll share this mic. Okay. Praise God. How many glad to be assembling this morning? When I walked into the prayer room this morning, I really felt the power of God. It's been a long time since I've been in the prayer room like that. Can I have a chair? I just want to sit down for a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. When I was sitting in there, I heard these words. This is not filled to capacity. There is a filling up to capacity that must happen in this place. For your prayers have gone up. For your prayers have gone forth. For your intercessions have not fallen to the ground. But they have been stored up and reserved for the releasing and the unleashing of divine activity. The increase of it must come so that there will be a filling up to capacity. Even as you would walk into a court, a stadium, an arena of some kind that seats so many people and you walk in and there's only a few people there. Maybe it's a third full or a quarter full or half full. And you look around and say, this place is not filled to capacity. The capacity is 20,000 people. There's not but five or 10,000 in here or even less. Even so, this is a place the Lord wants to fill to capacity. And so the Lord has a plan, a specific plan. And some here have qualified 
to start working and moving in that plan. For now the Lord says, you can be trusted now. For I see, as it were, a boxer bobbing and weaving, and I see that the enemy has knocked you down, but has not knocked you out. And you have learned to box in the arena of prayer, in the arena of faith, you have learned to be a skilled boxer. You have learned the art of avoiding the enemy's big blows. And I see that you have been, they have come and glanced off of you. And he has missed you as you continue to weave and bob. And as an old fighter, you have learned to last. You have learned to endure the early rounds. You have learned to lay back and wait for the moment and preserve even your energy to this point. For I say, you will finish the last rounds. Like an old skilled wise boxer, you have waited for this time now. For it is not the enemy that will knock you out, but it is you that have knocked him out. It is I that have defeated him, and you have executed his defeat over and over and over again. And so I see one that is finishing strong. I see ones that will run long and finish strong with combination jabs and a mighty left hook and an uppercut. And so I see the old fighter as an old eagle sharing its wings and then being renewed as they have waited on the Lord and bearing up with wings as an eagle and running and not being weary and walking and not fainting. Yes, your youth is being renewed like an eagle. For there is a race yet to be run and still much to be done. And so you have qualified yourself now for the Lord's plans. Wait, hear, listen. The Lord is going to begin to give you and even already has begun to give you more specific direction. Something ahead. Something to implement. Perhaps a ministry to start. Some kind of vehicle is waiting for the driver to step in it and go. And as you go, the sound will go out further. The dinner bell will be rung. And the people will come. Something is happening over there among that core of people. Those people know God in a way we don't. Those people know how to pray in a way we don't. Those people understand the power of God in a way we don't. And we must learn the secret. We must go join ourselves to their chariot. Because those people know go they know how to go they know where where they're going and we don't hi so listen for his plans listen for precise instructions now from the holy spirit for though one plants another waters but it is I, saith God, that gives the increase. And so this is, as it were, 
a watering hole as it has been. But it is still yet to fill up to capacity. You've been faithful. You've been steady. You have overcome the enemy's blows and the enemy's setbacks. And now you stand in a place, as it were, a pinnacle, a mountaintop, where the Lord will begin as an army officer to begin to command specific direction and instructions for you to do and implement. And you will see the fruit of it as you obey. You will see the fruit of it and you will say, this is the way. This is what we've been missing. This is what the Lord wants to do. This is how there will be a filling up to capacity. Pastor, would you please stand up with your wife? With your permission, I just want to minister to you. Father, we thank you for these their generals. Generals. Generals that only can be discerned by the wise and those that have eyes to see and discern not who they are after the flesh, but who they are in Christ and in you. And so, Father, I thank you for opening that which needs to be opened for them now. I thank you for the wisdom of the instruction that you desire even to build upon what you've already put in them and already told them to do. I thank you for the more than before. Yeah. I thank you, Father, that even numerically, Father, what their eyes have not seen will come to hear the generals. And those that they have gathered alongside them, there are others coming up in the ranks, ready to run, ready to do the work that needs to be done. Though they be not many yet that stand here in this place, Father, the representation of this core is great. There is a potential. There is a capacity. There is a power here. So, Father, I thank you for the greater now. I thank you for the greater. As I touch them, Lord, honey, will you help me? As I touch them, Lord, you touch them. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever they need to run the rest of their race and finish strong. Let it be so. Power. Power. From God. From God. From God. Who got him? Sam, come over here. Okay, okay. As we were in the prayer room, the Lord said to me, Carolyn, do you remember the dream I gave you about carrying many babies? And I said, yes. And he said, um, this is one of those places that there's going to be a birthing. And so I see, like it says in the word, when the apostle Paul said, I birth again, and I travail again, that Christ would be formed in you. There's a birthing coming forth of souls and a work that is for now. And so as it was in the day and in my word where I said, if even in one day, as soon as Zion travailed, she gave birth. 
So is it in this, I say to you, in that day and in the day right now, you are coming to that place of birthing, that which you've carried for so long. And I am here. Oh, this is my thing right now. And I'm talking about Carolyn. <laughs> Can I take your hands? And all those that pray, grab hands with somebody. I die. It's okay, pa. Pore kabe ka. You have opened up the heavens and you have carried and prayed out my will. And therefore, Father, they are ready to give birth into that which is you, which has been prophesied, even which their son has said and declared and brought witness of, of what he heard you say. And so we agree with those words. We agree with the prophecies and we war a good warfare in them. And so it shall be, Father, that they will carry this in the spirit of intercession and travail. And they will birth now. For faith is now the substance of things hoped for. The substance of my glory shall come forth out of you. And you will see it. You will see it. And it shall be so. And so, Father, all, all that, that unction and that anointing that they need and the wisdom and the counsel of birthing forth these things, so be it. So be it. So be it. May nothing be aborted. Nothing in the name of Jesus is under the blood of Jesus. Yes. You know, I, I, I'm not sure about this word, but open it up. That's just the utterance I, I get in my heart. Open it up. Open it up to more. Open it up. Open it up. Don't limit. Don't restrict. Just open it up. Whatever it is that the Lord has called you to open up. I think of, you know, in Africa when we were missionaries, we opened up a healing center. We opened up a prayer center. We opened up a Bible training center. Whatever it is that God's put on your heart to open up, open it up to all. Include the entire body. Include the city, the region, near and far. Open it up. And I don't know what that all means to you personally, but open it up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And the rest of you in this small company, but not small in the Lord's eyes. Faith is going to be more precious to you in these days now and that are just ahead than it's ever been. For you see, faith is not just a nice message. It's not just a formula, step one, step two, step three. It is a life. It is a lifestyle. And faith is going to be more precious and more sweet in these days that we're living in than it's ever been for even the master and the soon coming king said himself shall i find faith on the earth when i return and so as we get closer to the lord's return even as you've heard things will get lighter and brighter for the righteous but oh, not so for the wicked and for the unrighteous and for the backslidden. For does not does it not say in my word that the way of a transgressor is hard? So it will be hard for those that continue to transgress and violate and disobey my word and my instructions. And even what I've put in your heart that you have struggled with. I have been speaking to you. Surrender to me. Submit to me. 
Come to me. And time and time again, you have resisted. And when you have not resisted, you have surrendered part way. You have gone part of the way, but you have not gone all the way. And the Lord is calling you now to go all the way in. All the way in. No more, <clears throat> no more on the outside looking in. For you must come on into the inside and look out. For those that are on the outside looking in shall never understand. They shall never fully discern. They shall never know the mind of the Lord. But those that are on the inside looking out, they know. They discern. They understand the mind of the Lord. They know what the Lord is doing and what the Lord requires. So no longer be on the outside looking in, but come all the way in so that you can be on the inside looking out and see as I see and know as I know, says the Lord. For some of you have suffered unnecessarily self-inflicted suffering your own decision making has been poor and so you've suffered for it oh but it's never too late with the lord his mercy and long suffering never run out you can always begin again you can always start afresh again his blood cries yet mercy again so no longer be as one that wavers and that is double-minded and is not all the way in, but be as one of those that hears the call today and says, I'm going all the way in. I'm tired of making poor decisions. I'm tired of making half-hearted decisions. I'm going to commit and submit and surrender now for the time and the day is now. The times are now. The Lord needs me now. So submit and surrender and go all the way in. And you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll be blessed in your spirit. You'll be blessed in your body. Your health will spring forth. Your strength will be renewed. The Lord will grant you the desires even of your own heart. And you'll say it is so good to be in the blessing of the Lord, which makes rich and adds no sorrow. It's so good to obey God. And you'll say, oh, it doesn't cost anything to obey God. It pays. It always pays in the end. In the end, it always pays. And you'll be one of those that will be compensated for your obedience. Glory to God. Let's lift our hands. Thank the Lord for all of that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, when I walked in that prayer room, I was, I was at home. I'm at home. My wife and I are at home in the realm of prayer more than any other realm. We're comfortable there. We're comfortable there. And um, I thought, man, there's power in here. And people know how to work in prayer and in the spirit. See, we, we minister a lot in churches and we minister body wide. We're not just in faith churches, assemblies of God churches, but we minister sometimes even in denominations overseas and here. And I'm telling you, there's very few churches that know how to work in the spirit. It's, it's the truth. They just don't have a clue about how to work in the spirit, how to pray in the spirit. Everything is done from the head. Everything is done according to structure. Everything is methodical. Everything is patterned. Everything is programmed. I mean, if God decided to move during the praise and worship session, they wouldn't know what to do. They got to finish their five song set. You know, before God can move. God was ready to move. When I stepped into that prayer room, I could have gone into prophecy immediately because there was activity in there and I was seeing things and hearing things. And I'm like, God, yeah, it's nice. And I thought, Lord, did you bring us here for us so we could be blessed? Because sometimes the Lord does that. It's like, you thought you were coming to uh, 
bless them, but I sent you here for a reason. And it's in this case, it's both. I mean, I know the Lord sent us here. I don't know the full reason, but this is something for us too. We're working in this region and I feel like this is part of my company all of a sudden. And I've never been here before. Because I miss this. I'm not always in places that know how to pray and work in the spirit. So this is wonderful for my wife and I. She could tell you the same thing. We love to pray with people that know how to pray. That don't just pray out of their noggin the whole time, all in English, all with their understanding. And we're like, God, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost in here. Shh. <laughs> God said, I, God said, well, Paul said, I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding also. I will sing with my spirit. I will sing with my understanding also. Implying that when you pray in the spirit, you should interpret what you pray in the spirit with your understanding. That's perfect prayer according to the Spirit of God. If you just pray with your understanding, it's all mental. And mental praying is limited praying. Very limited praying. But praying in the Spirit, the mysteries of God, and interpreting that is unlimited praying. You're praying God's prayers. You're praying Holy Ghost prayers. And those are the prayers that are most effectual. I'm getting hot. Is it okay to take this? This was a Christmas present from my son. This nice jacket. Yeah, here we go. My armor bearer. <laughs> yeah, it goes with her around the world. Thank you. How many are glad you came so far? Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's pray about doing the Holy Ghost form down here, man. These people, I, I, I just feel so comfortable here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, I did have something in my heart that I semi-prepared. Oh, I need my jacket again because I stuck it in my jacket. It was raining this morning. My wife and I were praying and God began to speak to us, but I had nothing to write anything down on. When we pray together for the last probably 10 years, I keep a recorder because about 10 years ago, Carolyn started speaking these prolific utterances out of her mouth during prayer. It was interpretation of what we were praying. She came into a, a greater full-fledged flow of it. And the wisdom of God started coming out of her mouth. And I thought, God, this is so good. I got I to write this down. And then it was too much to write down. I had to record everything on here. And then I would transcribe it. And then a lot of my books were written out of these times of prayer, praying with interpretation. So this morning she began to say some things and I was, I was caught without my, usually I go to prayer with her with something, my phone, a notebook, a pen. And in the whole, I searched the whole hotel room for a stinking little piece of paper, anything that I could. All I found was a paper towel. <laughs> And I didn't have my Bible and my books. They were in the car. It was raining. It was early in the morning. I didn't want to go out there. So I, I had to have something to write on besides this. So I got a plate. In the room, there was a plate, you know, that you eat from. So this is sitting on a plate, and that's like my desk. And I'm writing things down. First time ever in Savannah. <laughs> But I want to, um, I mean, this is pretty basic, but 
I need a Bible too. See, I'm, I'm so, I'm prepared in the spirit, but not, not in the natural. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll take everything. Just these two. <laughs> yes, thank you. Forgive me for that. You should be more prepared naturally. Um, hallelujah. This is for the entire body. Um, you know, Jesus said that offenses must come and will come. How many have ever been offended in life at least one time? <laughs> How many have been offended many times? See, proving what Jesus said, offenses will come. But it's how you handle them. It's how quick you are to forgive people. It's how good you are at forbearing with one another that will cause you to stay in unity. It's how quick you repent yourself of maybe offending somebody. Now I'm going to ask another question. How many people have ever offended somebody? See that? How many people, maybe I shouldn't ask this one. How many people have offended many people many times? <laughs> When I was young, man, I was impetuous. I had a hot temper. I said things before I thought what to say. I had no filter. I just blabbed out whatever I was thinking, and I offended a lot of people. But I thought I was telling the truth. But it's, it's the truth in love. <laughs> I was good for truth, but I wasn't good for love sometimes. Oh, that's the truth, and I'm going to say it. Yeah, but what about love? Speak the truth in love. There's a time many times to speak it and say it in a, in a right way to say it, in a right approach to say it. So the Lord began to talk to us about offenses and how they help us grow. Everybody say grow. Offenses are good because they help you mature if you handle them correctly. And they shape your life. God is interested in shaping because, see, he sees the end. He's interested in shaping our lives so we can be excellent vessels for his glory sanctified and fit for the master's use, qualified for every good work. Some people just don't pass the test. We come from a very young church back home in New Hampshire, and we have a lot of visitors that come. You know, it's a happening place, I'll admit it. But it's a young place. It's a young church. And you get a lot of young men and women that come through, and they don't last. Why? Because they get offended very quickly. And you see them for a few weeks or even a few months, and then you don't see them anymore. Oh, where, where's Hannah? Where's Stephanie? Where's You don't see them. What happened? You found out they got offended by something someone said or did that they did not understand. See, the devil, when the seed is sown, the first thing the devil does is come to those that don't understand so that the seed doesn't even take root. Like the seed of the word doesn't produce in them. And so our number one responsibility as ministers of the Lord is to bring understanding continually to people because these young ones started blaming leadership. Well, how could leadership let that happen? How could they do that? And they didn't understand even what was going on and what leadership had to do to cut that off and bring some discipline and order. See, they only heard and understood one side of the story, and so they left. And who knows where they are now? Some of them have been gone for months. And now we're, in, we're coming into a move of God that's been so rich and they're missing out. Yeah, yeah. 
they're missing out. Listen, the assembling of the real saints in this hour is the sweetest place to be. I feel so sweet in this place. I mean, I don't feel, not me personally, but I mean, I feel sweetened by being in your midst because you are the saints of the Lord, the Savannah saints. This is an assembly of the saints. And it's precious. In fact, the Lord told me one of the protections against end time deceptions in this day is those that will not forsake the assembling of themselves together. There is a safe place in the assembly. There is a protection in the assembly that you can't really get anywhere else. Yes, the Holy Ghost leads us and guides us. Yes, we have the Word of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. But if you're not assembling, those weapons do not produce a lot in your life because you're disobeying the call to gather. You're disobeying the call to assemble. You know, this whole COVID thing that came through this pandemic, one of the demonic designs of this was for people not to gather anymore. Oh, I can watch church at home. I can watch online and get as much out of it as, as going. I can just stay in my pajamas with my slippers on and half naked, whatever. I don't even have to put on my makeup. I just lay down on the couch, watch the service. I said... That's a lie. Paul said, I long to see your face so that we can share it our mutual faith together. I long to be with you physically. He missed the assembling of the saints when he was out traveling. The churches he planted and established, he longed to be with them. And there's something about brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers being together in the brotherhood, in the family, in the faith. You can't get that out there during the week. You only get that in here. This is where the love of God should mount you up, encourage you. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 10, provoke one another to love and good works by assembling together. In fact, what the devil does, I always take the opposite. What he's, what he's doing even now, like this whole pandemic, well, you got to be six feet away from each other. You got to wear the mask. You can't assemble. God's doing the opposite. Assemble more. Have less fear. Have more faith. They're trying to put fear on you. Exercise more faith. They're trying to keep you from assembling. Assemble more. The seeker-friendly churches that are trying to tone down on even speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues more. They're trying to tone down on the power of God. Move in power more. Just do the opposite of what the devil's doing. Just rub it in his face. We're not among those that fear. We're not among those that are conformed to the world. We are transformed by the renewing of our minds on a regular basis. We don't think nothing like the world. It's the opposite. Many of the things the world does and says, we ought to be doing and saying the opposite. On my... Uh, phone this week, just the last couple days, same thing keeps popping up. You know, somehow these media things, man, they know what you watch, because I'm a sportsman. You know, I, I follow sports. I'm from Boston, so I have an excuse. <laughs> Title Town, USA, you know. <laughs> no! You can't live in Boston and not be a sports fan. It's hard. So they know I follow sports, so I get these pop-ups. 
about sports, you know, Boston teams especially, but today and last night, this hockey player from Philadelphia, they had a gay pride game where all the players wore the gay pride jerseys. And this one Russian Orthodox Christian would not wear it because of his religious beliefs. And now the whole media is slamming him, exposing him. Articles are being written about how hateful he is. Well, guess what? The opposite is the truth. He's the most loving. He's the most truthful. He's the most righteous. Why? Because he's standing with the word of God. In order to love something, you better hate something. You can't love unless you hate. Even Jesus hated evil and unrighteousness and iniquity. And yet he loved the Father and he loved his people. You got to hate something if you're going to be worth anything. See, the world says, hate, 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 hate. Yeah, I hate. I hate wickedness. I hate evil. I hate abortion. I hate sexual perversion of any kind. I hate it. I love truth. I love righteousness. I love Jesus. I mean, the world's intimidated us. Like, oh, we, we can't appear, we can't even appear to be hateful because the world would find fault with us. Their judgment is not just. They have no discernment. If you're living by their standard, you're conforming to the world. Conform to the word of God. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse. I shouted a lot this weekend up in Charleston. <clears throat> yeah, I need some more water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, I forgot to tell you because we didn't really have an introduction and went right into the move of the Spirit, but I come with a warning label. Seriously. When I was ordained to the ministry, I had a baptism of fire. So I get super excited about the Word, about the things of God. I shout a lot. So if you're not used to it, I'm sure you are, but that's the reason, okay? It's not me. It's something God did to me and in me, saying that the anointing that was in me was like a flame of fire. And it's been like that for 45, 35 years. And I never told people, you know, when God tells you something, you don't have to go tell them, oh, God just said my anointing is my anointing. First of all, it's not your anointing. It's God's anointing. My anointing is a flame of fire. God said that I would be a fire, fire preacher. I never told anybody, but I went to Africa as a missionary and began to preach on the streets, byways and highways. I was very evangelistic back then. And the students, our students started calling me the fireman. Well, they didn't know how prophetic and scriptural they were being because that was God's mark on me. So that's the warning label that I didn't get to give you at the beginning. But listen, don't, don't be telling people what God has said about you and your calling. Just do. Just be faithful. And your time will come. Your season will come. You know, I hear this too much, and I don't know why I'm saying this. Maybe somebody needs it, but we say that too much. The Lord told me. The Lord said this to me. Listen, if you're if you're like Methuselah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know you well enough to joke with you yet. Older in the faith, okay? You have earned the right to say that. But if you're young and you're going around saying the Lord, no, I'm just kidding, really. I feel bad about that now. <laughs> Calling him Methuselah. <laughs> he's fine. See, he's not easily offended. But I mean, don't, don't go telling people what God said to you. Prove it out privately. Let God work it out. We have too much pride in the body of Christ. That's all it is. People want to bring attention to themselves. Well, the Lord told me this, and 
My calling is this, and this is what he's told me to do. Well, just do it. Instead of just talking about doing it. <clears throat> I got friends in Tulsa <clears throat> that I went to school with that said they had a great big vision from God to go take over the world. And here they are 35 years later, they're still in Tulsa. They didn't go anywhere. Oh, the Lord told me to go this and do this and go there and do this and never happened. So be humble. That's part of maturing in the Lord. People that are maturing don't talk a lot. People that are prayerful, they're deep. Deep waters don't make a lot of noise. But shallow waters are always blabbing, always talking. You know, you ever gone to a shallow river when it's really running? It's, it's loud, it's noisy. Don't be a noisy Christian. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love, love, love. And then you won't be noise, noise, noise. You won't be like a tingling cymbal and a clung, a noisy gong. But people that the Lord began to talk to us about the shaping of your lives, that you have one of the greatest things that he uses is teaching you to overcome offenses. It's, it's huge. If you, if you trace the walk, the Christian walk of a lot of people that have been kind of knocked out of the race, it goes back to an offense somewhere or a few offenses piled on together. They got tripped up. Even their faith can, your faith can even become shipwreck because you couldn't get over this hurt, this bitterness. You know, as you age and grow older, you should become sweeter and healthier. People that are bitter, there's diseases that go with bitterness. People that have arthritis and sometimes they just have these debilitating diseases. I can tell you most of the time, I'm not going to broad brush this. There is a bitterness that got into their heart. They're full of regrets and hurts and things that happened in there. My wife as a baby Christian, can I share? I mean, the devil tried to take her out right away by offending her at the door of a service, one of the greeters, no greeter should ever be a greeter and say what she said to my wife. She said, honey, you'd be so cute if you weren't so fat. And she got so hurt. And, and it took some time for you to overcome that. Her leader. He, she said, Carolyn, you can't take this and let it um, fester in your heart. You have to forgive her. And, and the woman who said it to me was in her 70s. And yeah, it was Easter day and I was all dressed up, all pretty. Oh, wow. <laughs> I cried over the service. Oh. And then the people behind me were chanting out the devil. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Don't get me off on that now. People have no discernment. Good. The Lord said, those who have gone through the fires and the floods of great trials are shaped and built for the Lord's purposes. See, this life, just because you're a Christian, everything all of a sudden is not going to be hunky-dory, flowery, and rosy all the time. You understand that trials are a part of our faith? That trials actually build our faith? That you can't have great faith without great trials? That you can't have great victories without going through great battles? I'm looking for men that are tried and true. I'm looking for people that have been tested and tried and they're still standing and they're still smiling and they're still loving, and they're still forgiving. I had a man tell me recently because, you know, I had a stroke recently, and that's another story. My wife and I went through the 
greatest trial of our lives during the pandemic, not because we had COVID, but because she got cancer and I got a stroke. And this was right before or right after the Lord had spoken to both of us that when we turned 60 years old, I know I don't look it, but I am 60, praise the Lord. I know I shocked some. <laughs> no, I am. I'm, I'm in my 60s. She's younger than me. She always lets me know this. God didn't speak to us at the same time because I'm younger than you. When you turn 60, God said to you, this is going to be your most fruitful decade of your life in ministry. And right after that, I got hit with a stroke with complications. She got diagnosed with cancer, with complications. She had seven surgeries and is still recovering, still walking with this. And I walk with a limp. And somebody said, Bert, why are you walking with a limp? I hate that question now. It's like, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's an injury, whatever. I don't want to get into the whole, you know, I don't, I don't want to rehearse what happened. Well, somebody spiritual said, you know what? I trust you because I don't trust any man that doesn't walk with a limp. <laughs> and I said, that's good, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that. I'm going to take that. Remember Jacob wrestling with the angel? Knock, knocked out his hip. He became a prince with God. So I'll take that one. But the Lord was speaking to us. Look at me. <laughs> and um, he fashions us. He fashions us like, like the potter and the clay. He molds us. He shapes us. He fashions us. And some of you are being fashioned and shaped for something that you're right on the verge of being used in greater ways for God because you're qualifying through your character and overcoming your many trials. That's good news. You can turn your trials into gold. I like to say it like that. That's what happened to us. I came out of this, you know, this stroke that I had. It, it affected my mind. Because stroke has to do with your brain. It was a blockage in my brain. And it affected my, my thinking. My, I began to be anxious. I began to get depressed. I had to take psychotic medication. I couldn't sleep. And that complicated everything. I had severe insomnia. I was on sleeping pills. I was hearing voices. I was hallucinating. I mean, you can imagine a person that goes without sleep. It's going to mess up his mind. So I was diagnosed with mental illness. The devil was even whispering in my ear that I had committed the unpardonable sin. My mind became unsound. I tried to harm myself a couple of different times. Cut my wrist one time. Drank a, a whole cup of detergent another time. Had to be rushed to the hospital. This is all two years ago. And you know, when I came out of that, there's a scripture that says, any amount of suffering does not compare with the glory that will be revealed What's your birthday? 817. That's Romans 818. But, yeah, but it, it, it is. In context, it is. We got a Bible teacher here. I love but a fresh glory came on me when I came out of that, that dark valley. I began to write. That's one of my life's callings is to write. I wrote five books in one year, supernatural. They're all available out there at the table, at the table here and here. It was just one continuous theme that I separated into five books. And it was, I can tell you, it was supernatural. It was somebody else's hand was on my hand. I was writing, sitting beside myself, watching. 
on my phone. I'd get up every day and I wrote most of the books on my phone because I was getting so much inspiration. I couldn't wait to go downstairs and get my laptop. So I kept my phone by my bed all night and began to write on my phone. I'm saying that because how you overcome your trials can determine the degree of glory and anointing and even the closeness to the Lord that you will come into. Because we love the power of his resurrection, but in order to walk in the power of his resurrection, Paul knew a great secret. You have to come into the fellowship of his sufferings. Suffering is a word that charismatics hate. Nobody wants to suffer, but the apostles suffered. Paul said, I die every day. I've been crucified with Christ, yet not, yet not I, but however it goes, Galatians 2.20. Christ lives in me. There's a death. What I'm trying to say is there's a death that leads to life. You know, in America, we need more leaders that are dying instead of strutting. We have so many celebrities today. Apostle this, prophet this. It's like, I don't believe half of it. Because if you look at the early apostles and prophets, there was such an example. There was such an embodiment of Jesus that they walked in. They not only knew his power, they knew the sufferings of the Lord. And you can trust a man like that, that has suffered for what he believes. One of my prayers to the Lord recently has been, Lord, I want to go to Iran because I want to meet apostles that are, have suffered for your name like the early apostles did. I want to sit at their feet. I want to stand with them. I want to fellowship with them. I want to get some of what they understand about the sufferings of the Lord. Well, we can read the Bible and get some of that. But I want a manifestation of that in my life. And because I want to understand what these early apostles understood. Paul, remember when Paul, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish here shortly. Remember when Paul gave his farewell speech in Acts chapter 20? to all the elders from, was it Ephesus? Miletus. Yeah, he brought them to Ephesus. I love, that's one of my favorite passages of the Apostle Paul because you see his entire life in that passage, in that speech. And one of the things he said, why don't you turn there for a moment, Acts chapter 20. We've been quoting some scripture, but let's actually look at this one. <clears throat> We're coming in for a landing here very shortly. I can see the runway out in front of me. Acts chapter 20. We won't read all of this, but look at verse 18. And when the elders in verse 17 had come to him, he said to them, you know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. Look at that. In what manner I always have lived. In other words, the example that he was in front of them was Christ-like. People, people often forget what they hear, but they don't easily forget what they see. And Paul, I mean, if you read his epistles very carefully, he was always preaching character, example, leading this way, qualifying yourself even for eldership and leadership through character. In other words, you're nothing without that. And the greatest character is formed in trials and tests and suffering. And Paul had plenty of that. But you know, I wish I had my multi-translation deal, and I love some, how some of these verses read in the voice translation. Anybody got the voice here, by the way, or you have a translation that has the voice on it? Okay. 
Yeah, but anyway, we'll just stick to the New King James here. He said, you know from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility. Look at that. We could just take off and preach for a week just on humility. With many tears and trials which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful but I proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house and so on and so forth. But I want to, for the sake of time, go down to verse 31. This is all good. I wish I could read it all, but I'm not going to take time right now. Go down to verse 31. Therefore, watch and remember for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up, give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel or clothing. There was no covetousness in Paul for what people had, like we see so much of today. We measure so many preachers by what they wear, by how much money they have, by the amount of, of influence and popularity and platform they have. People are quick to add apostle and prophet to their name, offer an online class so you can go to the next level of the prophetic and the apostolic. The prophetic and the apostolic have nothing to do with online classes. They have everything to do with character and the anointing of God on a vessel. They emanate the very presence and power of God. They shine with the glory of Christ because of what they've suffered and the example that they are in their character. I get turned off very quickly by men that strut and talk about their apostleship and how many churches they've planted and how many countries they've been to. As Brother Hagin used to say, I'd rather hear a donkey bray in a tin barn at midnight than hear such, such foolishness. There's a great humility, a great work of humility that God's, God needs to do in our leadership today. It's one of the reasons the American church is so twisted, backslid, soft, anemic, weak. We have no, we have little, I'm not going to say no, because thank God for the fine men in this land that are strong, high character, anointed leaders, but there's not enough of them. I said there's not enough of them. I would never I would never put anybody in leadership that doesn't display character first. They don't qualify. They don't qualify. If their home's not in order, if their marriage is not in order, and I could go off in that and preach another week because I've seen marriages where the scandals that we see in our day, somebody's in adultery and the next day he's in the pulpit as if nothing happened, runs away with his secretary, marries her, and dumps his wife. And he's in the pulpit writing best-selling books. And you know, the worst, worst part is his adoring fans continue to hold up, thou shalt not judge card. Thou shalt not judge this man. He's a man of God. Well, he committed adultery and ran off with her and dumped his wife. He's not a man of God. Well, everybody has faults. In leadership, you disqualify yourself by such it's not the same to be in the in leadership you have different standards you live in a glass house and so i'm i'm just i'm just appalled really and i have to be careful because i can be critical sometimes I'm trying to do it more constructively so that people will have some kind of discernment and be careful who they associate with and who they follow. 
It's not a question of color or race. See, the devil, the world, they'll put all that on you. They'll put a racism label. Gay pride, you hate, you hate, you hate people. Whatever. The word of God has been forever settled in heaven. The standard of the Lord must be held high in this hour. We cannot compromise the word of God. Look how Paul, I think, I've, yeah, look how Paul finishes here. Verse 34 and 35. And maybe we'll go to the end of the chapter. Yes, you yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities. The Lord just said, you're getting them ready. That's what you're doing. There's more of you that need to step up in leadership and responsibility for what this couple is called to finish with. There's something in their hearts. I don't know if they've shared it or not, but they are called to finish, run long and finish strong. There's something else yet incomplete. There's something else that still has to be filled to capacity. That's what the Lord started with. And he's challenging some of the troops. You've got to step up in this hour and bear the responsibility of a leader qualified to lead by your character. Even deacons in the New Testament, a servant, they weren't even handling the word of God. They had to have their marriages and their homes in order. They had to be men and women of high character. Today, we just put, you know, elder deacon on anybody. We don't even check their lives, their marriages, their homes, their children. Just, oh, well, you, 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 you handle finances real well, so we'll make you an elder. You know, you have a real gift of serving. I like the way you serve people, but he's got no, no other character. His home life's not in order. He shouldn't be a deacon. Hello, I know you get taught these things, but I'm just saying this is what the Lord gave us. And he just said that you're getting them ready. Acts 33, 34, you yourselves know that these hands, I cry every time I read this. What a man Paul was in Christ. You yourselves know that these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who were with me, for those who were with me. My hands have provided not only for me, but for my whole team. That's what he's saying. And yet today, apostles can't even carry their Bible. They got an entourage that walks with them and serves them everything. They can't even get their own drink of water. They can't. And I realize some of these things can be honorable, but I mean, come on. The excessiveness of it that I see everywhere. It's like, the apostles counted themselves last, not first. Today, apostles count themselves first. Prophets count themselves first. In fact, they get offended. If you don't put them up here, sit them in the back row instead of the front row and see what they do. That's, that's their real character. Anybody still glad they came today? And he said this, I have shown you in every way. See the example, the importance. Discipleship hangs on example. The power of example is unlimited. The word of God hangs on conduct. It, the pillar... The church is called the pillar and ground of truth because we are supposed to be walking and conducting ourselves in truth. We are supposed to be the most high character people on the planet. People in the church, real Christians, are supposed to be known by their love and their character in your workplace, in your neighborhood. Everywhere you go, people should say, that is a real Christian. That is a genuine, authentic man and woman of God. If you don't have that testimony, God's got work to do. Let him do it. Paul said, it is, he said, I have shown you in every way that you must support the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
we don't know that experientially yet. I used to read that and say, well, I mean, not really. I mean, I like to receive more than I give. You know, I'd read this verse and I thought, Lord, something's not right in my heart because I think it's more blessed to receive. And I didn't really have an inside understanding and revelation of this word when I was younger. But when the love of Christ is ruling in your heart, that's when it's more blessed to give. And you understand the blessing comes back to you. The fullness of Jesus fills you. The Holy Spirit starts communicating with you in an intimate way because you've become a giver. That's why it's more blessed to give. Jesus gave everything he had. That's why he had such an intimate relationship with the Father. He, had, he did not have one selfish bone in his body. You understand? Jesus did not do or say one thing in his 33 years that was selfish. Imagine if the entire church... I said this at the forum this weekend. Imagine if the entire church came into this kind of love and maturity. We would be always looking to give, always looking to bless. We would be living out Philippians chapter 2. Turn there and we'll finish, I think. Philippians chapter 2. And verse, let's just look at verse 3 and 4. Lock these verses into your spirit. Make them a lifestyle. Practice them. Cultivate the meaning of these two verses in your own heart. Let nothing be done. Everybody say nothing. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. Man, that would change our lifestyle right there. We just did that one little part of that verse. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Everybody say lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Just that one verse right there. It's so life-changing. It's so life-transforming. Imagine if all saints in all churches just lived this one verse. It would eliminate all strife, competition, carnality, division, jealousy, envy. Think about it. We would come into such an increase of God's glory in our midst that we wouldn't even be able to stand on our feet. The glory of God would be so rich in our midst. His presence would be so manifest. And then verse 4, to cap it off, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. In other words, be interested in others more than you are in yourself, your own interests. I, there's just, there, you know, the church is immature because they don't live out these verses. Self, selfishness is immaturity. Hello? Self-centeredness is immaturity. It's carnal. And the responsibility of every ministry gift, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, is to bring the body of Christ and every saint to full maturity. God is looking for mature churches. Immaturity should not be a leader 
ever of God's people. And yet in these pulpits across the world in other nations, I have seen such immaturity. And it breaks my heart. It's sad. And it tells me, Lord, we have a lot of work yet to do. Some of these men have been in ministry for years, leading congregations, and they, to me, are still babies in many ways. Still self-centered, still caught up in their own ego, their own title, their own degree, their own self. It's just so appalling. No wonder we have what we have. But it's time to grow up. It's time to lead by example. It's time to bear the responsibility that God wants you to bear in this hour because there's a work here that is not filled to capacity. There is a supply yet that must be added to and given. There's a supply that needs to come greater. And I'm not just talking about in prayer. Of course, it starts in prayer and continues in prayer. But somewhere along the line, there's got to be something manifested on the outside. And so receive this as a charge for what God is wanting to do in your midst and with this body and in this city and in this region. I look for the move of God in a region when many churches are coming together with no hidden agendas. Without caring who gets the credit. Without caring whose name is on it. That's a sign of maturity. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. Honey, you got anything? You got anything, honey? Hallelujah. You want to pray? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for the richness of what I sense here by your spirit and what is happening here in the spirit. Thank you for bringing us here. We're the better for it. We're blessed for it. Thank you, Father that we got to meet two of your generals that have been hidden, that have been in the place of obscurity for a long time. But Father, you know it. You know it. Thank you for encouraging them in this body today. Thank you for the orders from heaven. Thank you for your plans and purposes, Father. May they be walked out, lived out. May you fill them with the knowledge of your will here in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that they may walk worthy of you, Lord, unto all pleasing, all pleasing. May this place and what you planned and purposed for it bring you pleasure in these last days of harvest before Jesus returns. We bless this body as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Y'all stretch your hands out toward them. Praise God. We're praying for traveling mercies. We're praying for good reports and financial blessing and doors opening. Hallelujah. Furthering of the faith that they have on the inside of them. Glory to God. Father, we just thank you today for the gift that they are to the body of Christ. Lord, we just, with our faith, we just completely seek to unwrap the gift in every aspect lord god may their gift find room for them lord just open doors opportunities lord give them new venues holy ghost holy ghost just as you dropped in the in his spirit those five books lord redo what you started in him bring in some more drop some more into his spirit hallelujah oh father god just let what's been in him for 35 years begin to pour out into books pour out in ways that will get out to the body of christ that would be limited by the natural but unlimited by the spiritual thank you lord god we thank you for it right now we thank you father for traveling mercies yes lord god just watch over them give them the strength to make this journey back home Hallelujah. And Lord, they sown into us. So Lord, I thank you for the harvest. 
I thank you, Lord, what's coming back on every wave. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Father, we thank you for the kindred spirit that's been uh, created here. And Lord, we, we, we take it to heart to pray for them. We take it to heart to keep them in our heart of prayer, to hold them up. Lord, and just thank you for them, Father God. Thank you, Father, that you brought them out. You said today, Father, you said that these have come out of great tribulation. They've come out of great tribulation and their garments are washed by the blood. Ha <laughs> ha Glory to God. Glory to God. And we receive that. We receive that, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As you were praying about the, the uh, transportation to getting back home, the Lord reminded me of how he translated Philip to the other side. And Father, we ask you to bring them to a place of supernatural. May the supernatural be so real that the natural is just, well, why is it happening naturally? You want to do a supernatural thing. And so now, Lord, as they drive today, Lord God, may they find themselves have covered miles that they don't even remember. And so we release that anointing right now in the name of Jesus and any spirits of tiredness that have tried to attach itself to their physical body, we release the unction of the Holy Ghost out of their spirit, Father God. You said you would quicken them, quicken them, restore what they've given up in their body, Lord. And you know, it's a new day for them, Lord. I saw that yesterday. They stepped in some new places by, this, by your spirit and by your word. And, and you quicken us to get up early that morning. And the very thing about the wounds, things that would happen in a day as soon as Zion travailed. So now, Lord, let that be real for them. The reality, the reality of living out this gospel supernaturally. May we kabas and we mark it in the realm of the spirit. From this day forth, 2323, I wrote that out this morning. January 2323, we make a decree that things will happen suddenly, suddenly, suddenly by your spirit because you've given them a message to get to the multitude. And so we release that over them now in the name of Jesus and angels will assist them supernaturally by the spirit of God. And we release it. We release it in Jesus name. And it's so. Hallelujah. 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 And when we were in the prayer room, I just saw like a, a, a rope. Um, and there was a pulling um, from you, Bert. And I heard the Holy Spirit that say that there's going to be supernatural setups this year. You're, you, yeah, you visited some places. Hallelujah that may have not been able to connect but there's going to be supernatural setups yeah. where the people will pull yeah. that's what the rope was for they will pull on the anointing hallelujah they will pull on the anointing and things that you have never even flow in in the spirit before hallelujah you will begin to flow into it yeah. in a greater measure yeah. this yeah. year is a year of greater measure hallelujah in which you're going to walk in hallelujah yeah. and those desires that you have desired even when you were speaking of up, talking about Iran, those desires, God has put those yeah, desires into yeah. your heart. Hallelujah. And there will be, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There will be an increase in power yeah. when you open up your mouth. Hallelujah. Things will no longer be the same. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see the signs and the, the, the miracles and the wonders in which you have. Yes, yes, yes. Ask God for. Hallelujah. That you will continually operate in these things. Hallelujah. It is a new day, says the Lord. It's new days. And because this is a new day, Hallelujah, there's an increase in the anointing that's upon your life to break through, to cut through, ha, to sever. Hallelujah. The works of 
of the enemy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And there will be such an ease, hallelujah. Just like how it was an ease for you to come in this place and connect, there will be such an ease, hallelujah. When you get into these places, hallelujah, there will be such an ease for you to take authority. Even if the atmosphere is not set right, you will walk in that place and you will set the atmosphere right according to the spirit of God and then things will begin to flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not do business for the kingdom of God as usual. For you are not a mere man. Hallelujah. 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 Because there's places for you to go. There's things for you to see. There's mysteries for you to hear in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And God has held such things for you to enter into it for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Ha, ha. And you won't miss it. There will be no lack. There will be no lack. There will be no lack in these places because this is where his riches are stored. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are where his treasures and he wants to take you through the doors of his great treasures. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The riches of his glory. Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You will walk in him. Both of you all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got something? Sabakai. <laughs> For behold, I send my angels before thee. Yea. And before you go to Iran physically, as Philip, so shall I translate you. And when you go there physically, you'll say, I done been here before. Pe o ton te te ba o ton ton she ke pe ere bri idi idi o kuku sha te ka ba kurese ke sa resi te ba o ban she ke te ba o koman she kaya and do not worry about what seems like frailty te te pe o kuba she kaya. For as I preserved John the beloved, so shall I preserve you. And the Lord will make you one who is like difficult to kill and one who is difficult to obstruct and one who is difficult to wound and one who just keeps on keeping on. Paso ta pitan to 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 she brite be e be okuban shekede be okupun kunde brisita ba shakaya. For the Lord makes you as one impenetrable, like one who could take a bullet and keep on going like nothing just happened. Ete te 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 okuku kunde brisita bakaba shakaya bite te te okuba shake woman of God brisa papa apa shakere mother of Zion paton te te pekude shakabaka ka shakere and daughter of Sarah brite te te okuma onde ida ba mbakude for I shall make you as one who shall be a mother of thousands yea thousands for many will come from you yea many and the quality of your travail and the quality of your intercession is special in my sight says the Lord and I remember it was it was told to I believe it was Rebecca and 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 when she was released from her home her father said and, and those who sent her out said be thou the mother of thousands of millions and the Lord says this to you because your daughter shall reproduce and your son shall reproduce and and the extent of the reach of your intercession you yourself and your hands will not touch it but there are people who when they pray they'll say mm, you sound like her almost like they got your spirit and there's an impartation 
of what God has put in you that, that other people will carry and homes shall be transformed because you have a very very big uh, burden for what is unbalanced for those who are very spiritual and don't have their homes in order and do not sit there and honor their wives and respect their husbands and raise up their children but I raise you up to bring back my order and for a restoration of all things and for you to train and disciple my body to come back to the things that I first supposed for you are my preference you are my heart cry you have those things that are on my heart there was a time where David longed and he wanted just a, a, a glass of water from from the from the well at Bethlehem and he had mighty men who were close enough to the king to hear his heart cry and they did all that was in the heart of the king and you you as a couple have done an unusual thing for both of thee together are close enough to the king to know his heart cry to know what he really wants more than anything any other thing and because of this and what shall I withhold from thee yea and ask of me yea and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession ask and I shall give it to you yea as Esther before the king Ask what I shall give thee and see if I won't do it. For according to my righteousness and according to my faithfulness will I answer thee. And not only shall healing and swift complete healing come to thee yea but you shall see an increase in the speed with which I use you to heal others and what I do and you shall not just be when you lay hands but when you are in the midst yea as Peter when they were in the atmosphere in the outer effigies of the of the of the of the glory that was upon him brushed upon others and they got healed so shall it be with the yea, that when you walk into a room and say nothing, even if you are not ministering, they do to to shake it, and they will not know. All they'll know is that God did it, but the Lord God will use you. And because of the grace on your life, and because of the way you've pleased the Father, so shall it be. And there shall an increase of angelic activity be thy portion. Yea, and when you're in your hotel room and when you're at home and even sometimes when you're driving, you'll see in the corner of your eye, angels, you'll see a bright light and you'll know that the Lord God is like, has it uh, 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 like almost like you are guarded and protected that as you like kings and presidents when they when they travel they have like armed guards wherever they go and in the same way so art thou commissioned yea and so art thou protected in the name of Jesus we bless you that it is this way and not otherwise amen, amen. something that's been burdening it it's now beginning to lift Yep. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Yep, yep. Hallelujah. It's, it's yes. I can feel a lightness, a freshness. Glory to God. 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 Yes, grace. It's a new grace. It's a fresh grace. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. A carrying yes. grace. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my. The devil is reflected back on him as of this day, and you will have double for your trouble. Yeah. Yeah. From this day. Yeah. 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 From this day. Graced uh -huh. for this race Hallelujah. Hallelujah. in every case. An emboldened. Something emboldened. 
an emboldening faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Emboldened. Yes. Emboldened. Yes, 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 yes. Emboldened. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. That fire that burns on the inside. Yes, 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 yes. Ha! Ah, the Lord's about to turn it up. Yep. It's about to turn it up. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. More emboldened than ever before. Yes, 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 yes. More emboldened. A spirit of faith. And even the gift of faith will begin to move. Begin to move through you. You'll stand in the face of impossibilities. And you'll look with clean in your eyes. Watch this, devil. Watch this, devil. Watch this turn. Watch this change. Watch it. Watch it. And there'll be such fierceness and such an emboldenment inside of your spirit. That things will change in such a way yes. that men will marvel and say, oh my, what in the world was that? You'll walk away from it. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll know on the inside. Yes. It wasn't you. It wasn't you. It was the spirit of him that lives with you. And he will rise up big in you and live big in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, and you are part of that new breed that was prophesied years ago. For you see, the new breed has my navel cord, and whatever is coming out of my navel will come out of yours. For you see, this is the season and this is the time where intimacy is number one on the channel of heaven. So when you tune into that intimacy with me, my navel cord will reach supernaturally into thousands of hearts. And there'll be such an importation because you're breathing my breath. You're carrying my life and you're causing my love to be a reality. Not just a head thing, but they'll know the depth and the height and the length and the width of my love. That far surpasses knowledge. Not a mind thing, but a heart thing. And they'll bow their knee even as you begin to declare the victory. Amen. Yeah, and I yeah, and I see y'all going to a greater depth of intercession because in order for him to take you, can you back the mic up, son? to the prophetic place, to a greater prophetic place, he has to root your heart deeper to where you feel his heart. Yeah, and there's going to be times where Brother Burt. She's going to catch a compassion and intercession. And you're going to manifest it in the pulpit. And you're going to be moved with compassion. And as that compassion is released, heaven's going to pour out revival. Because you long for revival. And he's put it inside of you. Yes. And he's joined y'all together with boldness and prayer and truth and character. Because no flesh shall glory. And know that it's not just a in a building you'll see the move. But he's placed it inside of you. That wherever your feet tread. You carry revival with you. You carry it with you. Thank you. And I see you in the spirit light on your feet. Ready to run. As one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. He's coming quickly. Thank you. Yet greater glory is going to accompany your voice because there's greater glory coming to your prayers because he can trust you with his heart. Therefore, he'll give you his voice. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Whoo! Glory to God.
But every time you turn up the radio, he said, you don't do it three times as much. Turning up that fire. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping that all in your yeah. life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, yeah. amen. Purpose today. Yeah. Purpose. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Just lift your hands. Thank God today for what he's done. Just say this in your heart. Father, I receive. I receive the word today. I receive the challenge. Whatever I go through, I will pass the test. I will conform to your will. I will do what you ask me to do. I will be faithful in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Okay. God bless you. Fellowship. If you need to, don't forget his books on the table. We'll be